Hello friends, my name is Sharmila Bonerji and I work as assistant professor in the field of communication skills at Durga Devi Saraf Institute of Management Studies. Today we are going to discuss about communication. Now what do you mean by communication? Communication in a bookish definition talks about exchange of messages between two people. Well, one Nobel laureate said that communication is the art of being understood. Now, what do you mean by an art? Well, I'll explain you in my next diagram. We say that communication is about exchange of messages between two people and we call it as the process of communication or the communication loop. How, what does this loop consist of? Well, we have a sender who codes messages for the receiver who decodes the sender's messages. Uh, we say that the sender uses a particular medium according to his or her comfort factor to transfer the message to the receiver and the receiver interprets it according to his comfort factor. Now when I say comfort factor, these comfort factors are actually made of attitude, certain attitude, perceptions and experience of the sender and similarly attitude, perception and experiences of the receiver. Now obviously these are two different people, so they will have their own attitude, perceptions and beliefs in life. They will not be common. but when they interact with each other, they have to actually make sure that they understand each other's attitude, perceptions and belief. So, the sender transmits the message using either verbal or non-verbal medium. By verbal, I mean using a language. Non-verbal is by usage of actions and other body language. The receiver decodes it according to his comfort factor and transmits a feedback or a response or reaction. Now this response and reaction should be according to the sender's requirement. Now when I say sender's requirement that's because sender has his own attitude perception and belief which I said but what happens it when the receiver receives it he doesn't understand the way the sender wants him to understand and the feedback in result which comes is not acceptable by the sender. At this point we say there is a communication gap or the sender will say sorry the receiver has not understood me. But it's whose onus to make the receiver understand? Well in communication we say that it is the onus or the responsibility of the sender to make the receiver understand what feedback he wants. But then how does this happen? Because the attitude, perception and beliefs of both are very different because that's the way they have grown in their life, what they have studied, what values they have imbibed, imbibed, imbibed in the society. Well, to make it much more easier for you, I will take you to my next slide. These are three terms which we speak about first is called the frame of reference, the second common frame of reference and the third is broader frame of reference. Now, all seems to be jargons I am sure for you but I will make life comfortable for you. What do you mean by frame of reference? Well, let us get back to a simpler form of the communication loop we saw in the second slide. Now here S stands for sender and R stands for the receiver. A P, B stands for the attitude, perception and beliefs of the sender and similarly A, P, B stands attitude, perception and belief for the receiver. Now F, O, R stands for frame of reference for each one of them. Now this frame of reference is comprised of different attitudes, perception and belief which the sender and the receiver have imbibed in their respective period of life and whatever message they make or code, it is comprised of these three things and there are much many other qualities which we as human beings imbibe in our life. But when we communicate, 
we would like to transfer this same things to my receiver. But again, my challenge is that the receiver is not me. He is a different individual who is comprised of a different frame of reference. Now, how do I achieve a common frame of reference across the two? That is what talks my next slide. Here, if you can see, the two circles have overlapped and at the common space, we have the same three characteristics called attitude, perception and belief. So, at this point, we say that the communication has been successful and the sender has been able to make the receiver understand what response he wants from him. And at this point, we say sender and receiver are at a union with each other and this point of union in the communication parlance is called common frame of reference wherein both sender and receiver are happy and we have a successful communication out here. But then what is the third point? The broader frame of reference? Well, the broader frame of reference talks about a person who is a very good communicator. Now, how he is a good communicator? He is a good communicator because he has a broader frame of reference which can accommodate multiple receivers with multiple combinations of attitude, perception and beliefs. So, this guy can influence people very quickly. He can get everyone into his broad frame of reference. He is very communicative, understanding, a good listener and a very smart communicator, a very pleasing personality who understands the requirement of each and every sender very effectively, empathic in nature as because he understands what the receiver wants from him and he whatever way converts the receiver to get him into his frame of reference. Now, depending upon all this, we have the four styles of behavior. In business communication, we call it the four styles of managerial behaviors. These are the closed style, the blind style and the open style. Now, on the basis of common frame of reference, broader frame of reference, we have classified these four styles. But there are two aspects which are common across all these four styles, these two factors are feedback and disclosures. Now, feedback we saw in our slide which showed you the communication loop or the process of communication. What was feedback? If we can recap, it was something which the receiver transmitted back as a response to what the sender asked him. That's what we call it as feedback. Or in a very simple way we can say, if you ask me a question and whatever answer I give you is called an answer. But what I tell you, whether the question was good, whether the question was bad, is my feedback about you. So something which I tell you about yourself. Secondly, what are disclosures? Disclosures are something which I tell you about myself, which you don't know. That is, the receiver telling something about himself to the sender which the sender is unaware of. Now, depending upon how much feedback you give and how much disclosures you provide, we divide four managerial behavioral styles which is closed, blind, hidden and open. Let us now look into each of these styles. We first get into the closed style. Now, people with this kind of style or rather let me reframe managers in these kind of who have these kind of styles, they have very poor interpersonal skills. What do you mean by interpersonal skills? It means they are unable to interact with people effectively. And why? That's because they neither seek feedback nor they disclose anything about themselves. So basically they are closed in their communication, they are uncommunicative and obviously unresponsive. How much ever you try to talk to these people, they will be you know 
the silent listeners without any response very difficult to break these kind of managers okay now we are going to speak on the next managerial behavior style called the blind style now what kind of a blind manager is a blind manager is a manager who is low on feedbacks and high on disclosures now what do you mean by that it means that these people they are going to provide you lot of feedback about whether you're going wrong whether you're going right but they will not disclose what is on their mind because these people are very much quiet and secretive they will not let you come into their frame of reference but they are known as authoritarians and know it all people why because these are people who will always guide you in a very authoritative way they are leaders but they are leaders who will make you do things according to their way but when they give you feedbacks they will sorry they will not tell you what they actually think about you but they are also known as risk takers now why do you think these people are risk takers they are risk takers because when business comes into crisis these managers don't wait and waste their time to seek feedback from individual people they are just going to disclose and order you to do whatever they want so we say in business management under crisis such managers are very useful now we look into the next style which is known as the hidden style now hidden managers what do they do they are low on disclosures and high on feedbacks just the opposite of blind so what does that interpret to now these managers they will not disclose what they are thinking in their mind but they will provide you lot of feedbacks feedbacks in the sense again that whether what you are doing is right they are very helpful people in a way they will be very communicative to you whatever you do they will provide their suggestions but you really never know what he is out whether he is in the same way they are very sociable communicative very good listeners because obviously to provide good feedback you have to be a very good listener but there is one negative things in them sometimes these kind of hidden managers they use organizational details in the form of feedbacks for their own personal growth now this sometimes becomes negative if you have a hidden style of manager as your boss you never know he is taking out things from you to utilize it against you so you have to be very careful when you deal with this kind of managers the last style we'll look into is the open style he is the happy go lucky manager he is very communicative a very empathetic listener who listens to you every second and provides you whatever he can as a helping hand so whatever he speaks out he thinks the same within because he is high on feedbacks and high on disclosures so he is going to provide you all possible you know knowledge as well as disclose everything may be secretive or non secretive about you or the organization they have very flexible communicative style but again there is some problem with these kind of managers they are not trusted by their seniors or supervisors now why do you think they are not trusted they are such good communicators they have good communication skills they are not trusted because they don't keep secrets they have very thin stomach line as we say they cannot hide any things among, among among themselves they are the people who are going to just speak out everything even information which needs to be sometimes kept secret in the organization so such people are actually they don't go much higher in the hierarchy in an organization now do you think that all these four styles are present in the individual people or in one person this is my question to you to think well i would say that all these four four styles are embedded inside one person if you are a good communicator how do how does it happen let me explain it to you if i am a good communicator then i have all the qualities of all the four managerial styles it's just that i need to see who's my receiver 
and change my style accordingly. So if I see a manager with a style who doesn't give feedback, then I need to perhaps become an open style with him and make sure that I take him into my frame of reference, influence him to come into my frame of reference. And that's the way I become an effective and good communicator. So I change across all the four style as and when I see the receiver is in which style. That's it for today. When we come back next time, we'll venture into something new in communication. Thank you so much for being with me today.